Right, so I'm going to now introduce this course on statistical data analysis, the second, ver second edition of the introduction to frequented statistics. The first version of this course was taught by Dario Papa in winter semester, and now I'm going to teach the second part. So because of the whole coronavirus crisis, I'll be doing the whole course online, and that means that we will never be able to meet in person. However, the way I have set up this course now is that most of the materials will be delivered to you through Moodle, and um, <clears throat> there will be links on Moodle for everything that you need to follow this course. And uh, in addition to the materials that I will provide, there will be a regular Zoom meeting every week as if we were doing a proper course, right? So on the scheduled, uh, during the scheduled time. So Mondays, 10.15 to 11.45 a.m. Berlin time, uh, we will be meeting on Zoom. I will send out a um, link for the weekly meeting and you guys can turn up there and attend this meeting and we will have a class just like we would regularly have if we were meeting in person. Uh, and in addition, you will have some uh, homework to do, and I will give you all those details on that. So the way I will deliver this course is that for every topic that I will cover, I will provide um, I will provide some slides, some uh, R code, and some data, and um, a video lecture. So you have to watch the lecture, work through the slides yourself. And then I will give some homework exercise uh, exercises that you can uh, work through. And then in the Zoom meeting, we will discuss any questions that you have or um, any problems that arose during the you know carrying of the carrying out of the homework exercises. So basically, our engagement will be through Zoom, but also through the lectures that you will read, uh, watch online, uh, and um, all the homework exercises that you will do, okay? So the basic setup for this course is the following. I, in the introductory lecture, I will be giving you some guidance on how to approach this course, how to have the right mindset. I've recorded a video for this, which is uploading right now as I speak, uh, and I will put the link to the video here so you can hear me talk about this. Uh, so that's just a preparation for you guys. Um, and in this lecture right now, I'm going to tell you what the basic structure of this course will be. I'm going to start by giving a series of lectures on fundamental ideas that Dario has covered in the previous semester, but I still want to remind you of all these ideas before I hit the interesting part of this course. So these are the foundational lectures. There'll be several video recordings, which I will put up here, and there will be some exercises that you guys can do to review your understanding of these materials. These basic ideas are very important to have very clear in your mind when you start looking at more advanced topics like linear mixed models. Okay? So once we are done with that, this should be done by the second week. I will start talking about linear models now. Uh, of course, you have seen linear models before, but I want to revisit the story once. Um, and uh, I will also provide an optional lecture on the linear model as uh, in its matrix formulation. Okay, so I will show you the formal theory in matrix algebra of how the linear model works. This is an optional lecture. If you feel that it's too advanced and not really something you want to get into, you can easily skip this lecture. The main point of this lecture is going to be to give you a feeling for what the underlying uh, logic of the linear model is. We need to understand that underlying logic if we want to understand deeply how contrast coding works. That's the next lecture. Okay? Now you can of course do contrast coding without deeply understanding the underlying math behind it. But if you're interested in seeing how the uh, contrast coding machinery works in the linear model fully, you'll have to understand the uh, the matrix formulation of the linear model. And that's why I have this optional lecture here for those of you who, who want to know about this. None of the material that I present in this optional lecture will ever be examined. I will never ask you to do matrix derivations or anything like that. 
it's just for your understanding that I provide this material. Okay, so assuming that you have some basic idea of linear models, and you may or may not have listened to my linear modeling as in the matrix form lecture, I will then provide a very intuitive lecture on using contrast coding for defining your research hypothesis in your data analysis. There's a paper that we have written that provides a very detailed and I think quite accessible tutorial on how to do this. So you are encouraged to go through all this material. It will take some time to understand this, this paper. It's about 100 pages long, okay? So it's not easy to follow, but it is worth studying if you're getting into real data analysis, okay? This is one of the most important topics in data analysis that I wish somebody had taught me when I started my career in psycholinguistics, okay? Uh, so contrast coding, there will be a lecture on that. Uh, there's an R package that one of our students has written, which is very useful for defining hypotheses and then deriving contrast uh, matrices from those. So the, I will discuss this briefly and show you how everything works. Okay, so by lecture four, we have looked at linear modeling theory and a contrast coding. And then from then onwards, we are ready to start talking about the real meat of this course, which is the linear mixed model. So I will record lectures on linear mixed modeling. And <clears throat> I've got some old lectures that I've put here that you can look at if you want to look ahead. But I will re-record everything for this particular course. Okay, So this will be a brand new recording. But I just provided some placeholders for pre from previous attempts here uh, in case you want to look ahead. OK, so I will introduce linear mixed models in two lectures and then I will introduce the generalized linear model, in particular the linear model with the logit link function, because this is a very commonly used uh, framework. And I will also introduce the linear mix model in this uh, logit uh, link function situation as well. Okay, so then the next topic, the next set of lectures will involve simulating data in order to generate uh, data repeatedly to simulate a situation where you're repeatedly collecting data from an experiment. This is not something that we actually do in real life, but this is the logic of the frequentist paradigm that you assume that you can repeatedly collect data and this repeated collection of the data has some properties. We can study this by simulation. So I will give you some lectures on how to simulate data for your own experiment, you know, to learn how to produce simulated data in order to plan uh, your analysis before you actually get any data. And so that's the topic of the next lecture as well. Once I've taught you how to simulate data, I will teach you how to develop a reproducible research workflow. So when you design your experiment, you already design the plan, you plan ahead and you design the analysis that you will do before you get any data. So what you have is simulated data that you created. You analyze that simulated data. You're completely ready with your hypothesis tests and everything. And then the data come in, and you just plug in the real data and complete your analysis. Right? You don't have to actually do any thinking at the, after the data collection stage. Of course, you have to do thinking at all stages. But the planned analyses can be thought out using simulated data before you actually do any uh, you know, analyze any real data. So that's a reproducible workflow lecture that I will give. I gave this lecture at the Max Planck Institute in Leipzig some months ago, and so I'm going to reuse that material to spell out this story for you. That leaves us with two lectures that I will use for giving you practice with real data. So we'll, we'll look at some real life data sets and try to sort them out and figure out what analysis we can do and so on. So this should give you a good feeling for how to actually deal with real life problems. And then finally, there will be a, an exam that will be held during the, uh, you know, the lecture period that I have. So what, what is the time? We teach Mondays, I teach Mondays 10 to 10.15 to 11.45. So this will be the period when we will do the actual exam. And currently my plan is that the exam will be run online through Moodle. So the, the general uh, approach I will take is that I will give you a sort of multiple choice test that will start on time at 10.15 and then you have a fixed amount of time to complete the exam and you have to submit the exam through Moodle 
and the exam will time out and shut down when the time is over. So you have to finish and submit your exam on time and then it will be graded online and I will give you grade based on that. I believe I'm allowed to do this this year because of uh, the various restrictions on physical meetings. But I think it'll be okay. So my plan is not to torture you with too much detail. I just want to test in this, exa in this exam whether you basically understand the concepts, you know, like you understand what a linear mixed model is, what the various components of the linear mixed model are, uh, what a power analysis will tell us, and what type 1 and type 2 error is, um, and um, what the results of a general, generalized linear model with a logic link function, link function what, what we can conclude from it, and how we derive all this. So these, these kinds of questions uh, are what I will ask you in the final exam. I will ask you questions, simple questions about contrast coding, nothing very complicated. I will certainly not ask any questions about matrix algebra or the matrix formulation of the linear mixed model. Okay, so the, I want to test only your intuitive understanding in this course, your practical understanding. No theoretical details will be uh, presented in the final exam. Okay. Uh, a common question that I get is you people usually want to see a, a practice exam. This is going to be difficult for me to set up because um, it's a lot of work to create an exam. I have lots of previous year's exams that were not online exams. So the type of questions that I gave there were different. So what I can give you as a compromise is all the previous year's exams. You can look at them and you know see what uh, the questions were that I asked. So that might give you some feeling for the kind of questions that I will ask. But uh, as a general principle, you should treat the homework exercises as preparation for the final exam. And so that is why it is very important to um, make sure that you do all the homework. And in fact, the requirement for this course is that uh, in order to do the final exam, at least 80% of the homework must be submitted. And it has to be submitted on time. Please don't submit it late. That doesn't count. Uh, unless, of course, you have some legitimate reason like sickness or something. But I hope that those kind of issues can be avoided if you start the problem, the homework exercise on time, finish it on time, and submit it on schedule, right? And uh, by submission, submitting a homework, I want to stress that I don't want you to submit blank assignments uh, or non-compilable you know, PDF files. Sometimes uh, I get submissions that I can't see, so those don't count, right? So please make sure that I, can s uh, I get a reasonable attempt every time you submit a homework. So you must submit at least 80% of the homework assignments in order to be eligible to take the final exam. And the reason I stipulate this is that the homework assignments actually prepare you for the exam. So if you haven't done the homework, you won't be able to pass the exam. That's a straightforward equation that I have seen again and again in this course. So I'm, uh, I require homework submissions. The exam is going to be 120 minutes. So that means it's full two hours. And what that means is that uh, if we start the exam at 10.15, then I will give you a full two hours to complete that exam. Okay, so up till 12.15, not 11.45. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the time but I will time the exam such that it can only be done within two hours, okay? All right, I think I have covered everything. The, I think the only interesting challenge we will have is learning how to work with Zoom, but we will cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, right now, I think we don't need to worry about anything there. So that's the introduction to this uh, course. I think I don't have any other open issues here. Yes, there is actually one. So one thing that you should do is that whenever you have any questions about the materials that I provide on YouTube, uh, you know, the offline lectures and the homework assignments or any other questions that you have after the Zoom meetings, you can always post these questions on Moodle. That's what Moodle is for. So don't hesitate to use it for asking questions and for getting feedback. So that's it for this introduction.